Frothy. What a fantastic show. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Friday Frothy. You're on a Friday night in the Frothy Bar. How are you, Guido? Good, mate. Good. I few, believe we're on now. Well, a few we're technical difficulties. Sorry for guys who were, were online waiting to uh, to see the show, yeah. but uh, we don't know what's happened, and uh, we've decided to pre-record. And <laughs> I'm starting to get older, mate. I've been sitting here for that long. Your hair's falling out. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's gone. <laughs> <laughs> guys, welcome. As I said, uh, all of our friends in Victoria are a little bit sad for you guys. Uh, we've just heard yeah. this afternoon that you've gone to a lockdown again. Hopefully, hopefully not too. No, no. Yeah. But this will give you all something. This. We'll give you something to watch because tonight in the Frothy Bar was live, but it's not so much live anymore. We've got uh, what, what have we got, Glenn? Hawthorne player, Hawthorne player, uh, Hall Tasmanian Hall of, uh, Hall of Famer. Yep. Yeah. CEO of uh, of Tasmania football, yeah, exactly. Well, is Scotty, that right? Yeah, it's got to tell us in a minute. Because I, I can't. He's done many things. Father of Matthew Wade, Australian cricketer. Yeah. Scotty Wade, Scott. There Thank you, you so much for coming in, mate. And uh, no problem. Sorry, it's taken so long no, to, no, no, <laughs> to get to you. Mate. Technology's got us. Can't do much about it. It's a real big uh, turnout in here tonight. Oh, yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's probably not such a great show as Murphy oh, would say. No. And Lenny, just before we get into this, mate, it uh, wouldn't be right if we didn't say anything about our sponsor, Corey's Garden oh, Landscaping. Thanks, Corey. Thanks, mate. Thanks, Corey. Thanks for everything, mate. Get on it. Any uh, landscaping you need in Hobart, decks, pergolas, whatever it is, just get on the Corey's good Garden on, Landscaping. He's a good man. Thanks, mate. Can we get actually? I wouldn't mind starting with a little go bit different. different go. Let's go. So, getting into footy, Scotty. High school, where did we start, mate? Mm. Right back? Well, I, I started at two schools that no longer exist so, uh, Abbotsfield Primary School. Oh, and, that's uh, gone, is That's gone. And, oh, uh, geez. I was a Claremont boy in Claremont High School, and that's yeah, gone. Um, that's gone too. But yeah, so school footy. But I came from a footy family. Um, my grandfather um, played footy and represented Tasmania in originally uh, West Torrens in South Australia yeah. and, and grew up in Penguin and then came to Hobart. So uh, my grandfather, and then he was a Cannon All player and then oh, yeah. he was an original board member of the Hobart Footy Club and then I guess my family footy club's Hobart Footy Club. Um, my dad played in a couple of flags at Hobart in the 59-60 premiership teams and, um, wow. and then... Uh, yeah, my uncles played um, for Hobart, and my brother played for Hobart, and my cousins played for Hobart. So I, I went to Hobart um, under the father and son rule yep. um, um, straight after high school, and um, yeah, one year in the under ages, and then straight into the seniors after that. And so Hobart Footy Club, Hobart Hawthorne, Clarence, uh, Kingborough. Um, and back to Clarence, um, that's pretty much me done. And then Lauderdale Supercats, I finished yeah, one yeah, with the Lauderdale well. Supercats. Well, yeah, so, uh, really yeah, yeah, yeah. so that, that's that that's pretty much, yeah, so... Uh, so how, how did the uh, the Hawthorne run come about? So uh, we when I started at Hobart, um, it was an um, interesting time, um, an old legend of the club. Well, I started under Barry Grinter, who's a oh, former wrestling thanks. player. Cool, yeah, man. yeah, and... Um, and then uh, I, I actually signed uh, in 1970, um, late, late 1978, I signed a, 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 a Form 4 to go and play in South Australia with West Torrens. Um, it was Barry Grinter had gone from Hobart to West yeah. Torrens and so he, he got me over there and Wayne Jackson was actually president of West Torrens at the time. So uh, um, now they merged with Woodville, um, Woodville West oh. Torrens. So, um, and then um, Mal Pasco coached Hobart, and um, there was a heap of young blokes in that team. Um, and Chris Fagan was in that um, oh, team, yeah, and yeah, um, yeah. Wayne Pettit, and yeah. Ricky Dolliver, and Craig Fraser, Scotty Clayton, uh, lots of good young fellas from you know the Hobart footy community. And um, we did we didn't have much success in the first couple of years, and then Paul Sparrow came along in 1980. And um, long story short, we won two premierships that year. We won the first version of a 
of a statewide league, which is called the the Winfield Cup. Um, Winfield, um, Winfield Cup. Yeah, Winfield Cup. Cup. Yeah, so so, work for yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I know all about that. Yeah, so we we um <laughs> we actually beat um we beat Clarence. So that was uh yeah I, I know we that? played nineteen eighty. So it was so it was, it was actually a was a shortened so the three regional comps so the TFL and the NTFA mm -hmm. and the NWFL um, dropped off a round and we started pre-season and early into the season we we played this sort of mini statewide um, statewide league really so we played I remember Hobart played City South and we played South Launceston I think or East Launceston when they were East Launceston then and and we played Wynyard and Latrobe and then you know, a couple of teams down here and. Um, yeah, long story short, we ended up beating Clarence in the grand final of the yeah, well, Winfield Cup. And then and then we had a great year. So we came from Wooden Spooners in 1979 to Premiers in 1980. And we beat, uh, we beat Glenorchy in the grand final. So, uh, and then during that year, I was lucky enough to... Um, I played a bit of state footy in, you know, played the first state game. I think I was 18 years of age. We And so I'd sort of been, uh, you know new to the state team um, and then we um, we played a state game in 1980 against South Australia and we beat them um, yeah. we beat South Australia at North Hobart and so pretty much after that game I had um, a few VFL clubs sniffing around so in the end I had to really choose between Richmond and Hawthorne um, they were the choices so Sproutley wanted me to go to <laughs> Sproutley wanted me to go to Richmond and uh, and then probably Peter uh, Hudson was pretty in instrumental in me going to Hawthorne and yeah. um, and David Parkin was the coach of Hawthorne in 1980 and he he probably nailed it and then he went and coached Carlton in 1981 but um so yeah but I, so I had three years at Hawthorne under Alan Jones so yeah. that was pretty um, mm. significant we won the premiership in 1983 when I was there I wasn't far off but I wasn't just quite good enough that's all so good good to play yeah. with some of the champions of the game you, what, what, yeah I was going to say so when you what was the a coming from um, from Tassie. As yes. How? What was it like fitting into uh, Victorian life? Was that easy for you? Or? Yeah, it was pretty easy to be quite honest. Yeah. yeah. And Tassie footy. It's interesting the the gap between Tassie footy and the VFL, and then wasn't as big as yeah. you know many people would think. You know, because yeah. um, all the Victorians were well, it was, it was, it was strong here. Right? Yeah, yeah. Well, all the Victorians were. Uh, they were obviously better, but there were some good players running around Tassie footy. Oh, um, good. Um, and so, uh, yeah, you know, it was just that they were a bit um, bigger, a bit quicker, a bit fitter, a bit better. Um, yeah. But it was, a, you know, there wasn't there wasn't a massive big gap. So, um, yeah, it was good. It was good fun. What what what, what sort of got so okay, So you've gone to Hawthorne now. I know, being a Hawthorne follower, just how strong they were. Yep. Uh, who was we up against? Mark? Well, so it was so, uh, for it, positions. Yeah, well, it was interesting a year in the Hawthorne um, Footy Club because they were just coming the. You know, off the back really in 19, so my first year was 1981. Yeah. They were coming on the back, off the back of some pretty good success in the late 70s under yeah. David Parkin and John Kennedy. And, and so there was a, the legends of the game who were the sort of all mature players, you know, Peter Knights and Lee Matthews and yeah. Kelvin Moore and Don Scott. And, um, you know, so that sort of that premiership era of the late 70s. And then, and then there's also the, um, the younger guy starting, you know, Tassie Rodney Ede was there, yeah, and right, Ian yeah. Payton was there, so there were a couple of Tasmanian boys there. Um, but and then there was um, so there were those guys of the late seventies, and and then there started to be then the, the guys coming through in the early eighties, you know, Peter Swab and um, Gary Ayres and Colin yeah, Robinson. Colin Robinson, Robinson Robo was, was there. Up, yeah, Robo was there for a few years, and yeah. uh, and so and then of course in my time. You know, played a lot of footy um, in the in the twos with the, then the next generation. Like I said, Peter Swab, Gary Ayres, Dermot Burton, Dermot Burton, Dipper. Yeah, he really? was there. So, yeah, okay. so they um, Terry Wallace. So yeah. probably in my time at Hawthorne, Terry. Well, Peter Terry Wallace won. Yeah, 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 yeah. Peter Welsh. Um, Terry Wallace won um, two best and fairest in the three years that I was there. So, um, and I think Lee won the other one. So. Um, so you know, good. It was a sort of a new generation of those guys that um, that nineteen eighty three was the first year of their success in the eighties, yeah. and um, um, then the great rivalry with Essendon. Um, so yeah, it was just good, good footy environment. But it was good because you know, I enjoyed the fact that it wasn't a professional game, and you went to work during the day, and you went to train, and 
Did not, I was going to say, so was you, was you, what was you doing then? Were you in bank? In bank I joined, I joined the bank, you know, banking you industry. The bank in, uh, yeah, I worked at uh, Westpac Camberwell Branch, Camberwell. which is a suburb, suburb just next to Hawthorne. Uh, yeah. Lived in Hawthorne, um, worked at Camberwell. Um, yeah, so it was pretty, pretty that's good experience. Pretty good experience, yeah. Yeah, yeah so that's, that's what I mean. So back in those days, well, you, you, well, as I said, you Playing AFL football and yeah. uh, or VFL football, VFL. as I was. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. beg your pardon, and yeah. uh, and, and working. Going to work. And, I, and sometimes I actually, I still wonder. Can I, I know I'm old school, but sometimes it's a pity it wasn't like that still. Well, yeah. Because I think, yeah, it's only my opinion, but it's just some of it. It's just uh, monetary wise. I think they're starting to like even now with this pandemic. Pandemic. I mean, it's all re revolved around money. Yeah, it is. It and is. Uh, we, the games. Yeah, I'll talk to Scotty a, a little bit later about this, but the game's changed. Oh yeah, yeah, and yeah. not for the better. Yeah, no, no, that's true. That is true. When when you got over there and and you're talking about working and and training, when you're playing here in Tasmania, were you training like two three times a week? And when you went over to the VFL, was it was it more intense or yeah. was it similar? Uh, well, similar in season. The difference was pre season, yeah. right? So. Um, so yeah, and um, so again um, in Hobart, you know, pretty much every year I ever played footy at a decent level. Um, yeah, you know, you'd be three nights a week training. Um, so uh, and it was, you know, you guys would always be pretty fit, and and lots of long distance running in those days, yeah. right? So um, um, certainly in 1980, when Paul Sproul came to Hobart, we noticed a big, you know, difference in Paul Sproul had come from um, playing in um, premiership teams at Richmond, you know, great Tasmanian premiership teams at Richmond, and then he coached Sandy Bader, three yeah, consecative yeah, flags. In the bar, yeah. in, he coached Sandy Bader, three consecutive flags in 76, 77, 78. Then he had a year off um, yeah. and went travelling around the world. Then he came back and coached Hobart, he won premiership, like I said, we won two in the same year. He was a school teacher, wasn't he? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and then he ended up, um, Sproul ended up the Director of Sport and Recreation in yeah. Tasmania. So he's a great man, great to, great Tasmania. So yeah, we, we, we pretty much in 1980, we did what was pretty equivalent to an AFL pre-season um, yeah, okay. because that's what, that's all he knew. So, you know. But that, um, that, that's, that, I was just going to say, sorry to interrupt yeah. you, but that, that's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, guys back then like Paul Sproul, yeah. the, you know, uh, Peter Hudson, yeah. Dip, yeah. It, you know, from injury, uh, playing at the top level, kicking goals down Hawthorne, coming back after doing his knee and everything else, they were the sort of guys filtered, not yeah. just throughout, it's throughout Tasmania mm. back in those days, and mm. there was a lot of guys, it was super strong, and I think that's what Scotty was, you know, referring yeah, to. Yeah, it was, it was super, super strong. strong. Yeah, and, super I mean, strong. And, and I think the representative, you know, the yeah. three region structure yeah. then, when the, the representative games were massive, yeah, I mean, massive. you know, one of the, one of the great thrills of my footy career was, you know, when you when you sort of play for your club, and it was a great thrill to be represented, That's get right. represented for the TFL. And mm. uh, yeah, my first game, my first rep game was in Launceston, um, the TFL versus the NTFA, and at York Park, and the ground was packed, and I was in the forward pocket, and Pete Hudson was full forward. Yeah, so full that forward. was uh, that was like, you know, that was a great thrill. And um, and you're right, is that you know the it was that combination of talented young Tasmanians playing with ex-AFL players. It was pretty, pretty special era of footy. But yeah, so then when you go to Melbourne, the difference is in pre-season. So I remember at Hawthorne when Alan Jeans came in, um, and you know clearly the best. Uh, you know, Paul Sproul was a great coach, but I think Alan Jeans is certainly, you know, the way he set Hawthorne up for that magnificent era of the eighties, and he was a, he was just a sensational coach and the, the players loved him um, even though he didn't give me many games I still thought he was the, the, you know, he was the greatest greatest uh, coach but he was full time policeman during the he day and he was a coach yeah, yeah. And, uh, but you know we did a I, I'm, so my the biggest shock I got is we we came in we had to train 31 consecutive days we trained in the pre-season so just sort of, and then we tape it off leading into the season, and you do your three nights a week. So it was that, wow. it was that thirty-one consecutive days, and they were more than one session a day. So sometimes you'd you get up at six a.m., go for a ten k run, and then uh, down, you know, down at the club, go for a ten k run, and then go to work, and come back at night, and then do more training, right? And so we did that for, so we might have done, you know, for somewhere between forty or fifty, sixty sessions in yeah. those thirty days, and then. 
you'll fit enough and bang you into the bang season. So, the um, so that was the only difference. We sort of come from, uh, you know, in in the TFL there was there was the pre-season. You know, you didn't start in October. You started pretty much straight after Christmas and. Uh, you know, middle of January and then you started training but um, here at Hawthorne it was it was pretty full on in the pretty pretty full on in December and January yeah. and then yeah pretty similar for the rest of the season to be called. Was, was you on your own when you when you went over was you on your own or girlfriend? Well I, I actually uh, my uh, wife um, I got married young um, yeah that was a funny story that was uh, I actually you know I said um, I got um, I was going to go to South Australia yes. anyway, um, mm -hmm. and I said to Karen, my wife, uh, would you come to South Australia um, with me? And, and she sort of questioned whether I was committed to the relationship. So I said, so, do you want to get married? And, and you know, it seemed like a good idea at the time, and I'm still married to the same woman, so it must have been yeah, some sort of right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <did it> right. <laughs> but yeah, she came. To, she came to Melbourne with me, and uh, she also got a job in the in the bank in the city. So. Uh, yeah, it was a good. It was it was a good um, kick off to our marriage and yeah, yeah. Melbourne life yep. um, for a well, young fella. It was good. The yeah. reason I asked yeah. you that is because at least you had, you know, this, yeah. you, you you was with your, your partner and you yeah. had someone there. I know it's good to have mates, but yeah, yeah. it was yeah. You, like yeah. some some young kids go now and they have got nothing. They have got no one there. Yeah, bar yeah. bar the club. Yeah, and you know they get. I know a lot of the young fellas went over and they'd be put with the family yeah. back in those days. Yeah, absolutely. They? And, uh, and, and of course they get looked after. They yeah. were they, you know, like yeah. taken in. And, yeah. But it's still not the same as, you know, like with a brother or Someone. A, yeah. or family. Yeah, no, so that's that a, good. That's, yeah. Yeah, they, I think that's that's very true. I think that, um, yeah, it's, it'd be easy for a young fellow to lose his way. Lose his way. Yeah, yeah, so, well, yeah, 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 so, um, um, but yeah, the, the clubs, um, and you know, it was, it, there was not much player welfare in those days. It was pretty much, you know, get off the plane and someone would meet and greet you and you'd go to the club and then you'd shake a few hands and then right oh, you're, you're on out. your own. You're so you're training. You so yeah, yeah, so you, you had to fend for yourself. Oof. But, um, but uh, it's a bit different now in terms of player welfare. Yeah. yeah. So what, what position did you play? And, uh, so yeah, main, mainly, main, well, I was, a, I was a rover. That was my position. But it um, was interesting that Alan Jeans always thought my best position was in the centre, so at Hawthorne, he, he felt I was, um, a, you know, as a sort of in a se in a senior football capacity, he felt I was probably better value in the centre. Um, but I said the sentiment at Hawthorne in my uh, three years was Terry Wallace, so he won two best and fairest and and was runner up in the other one. So uh, yeah, it was hard to replace Terry. He pretty much never missed a game. And so yeah, I, I was like uh, I was on the fringe. I was probably in the squad of. You know, 20, um, I was probably number 25 or 6, somewhere mm. like that. So, you know, when the best team, a few blokes were injured, I'd get a game. Um, I was thereabouts, but I wasn't quite in the... Yeah. In the um, but, you know, being, just being part of the whole process was pretty pretty special. And, you know, being part of a sort of a, a premiership era yeah. um, was good. It was good. It was, it was a just, strong club, wasn't it? I, uh, yeah. I good, strong, but, did you ever think... You know, I know. I mean, I'm glad. I'm not like here. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. The Hawthorne bells are coming out. As we said, we, we both know Tony Martin. For his <laughs> yeah, yeah. He went to like a club like Melbourne. Yeah. You ever think, oh, what if I went to a club that wasn't didn't have that success? Well, I never. I never. Um, you know, what did you? I certainly, I certainly never thought of going to another club. But there were a couple of times I remember one night at training at Hawthorne, Alan Jeans. You know, we come in and anyway, we come into the group and you know, after our warm up and then. Jeans, he just pointed the finger to me and said, listen, by the way, you're not going to Essendon. And, and I, I didn't know, what do you mean you're not going to Essendon? I, I didn't know anything about <laughs> it. So apparently, so we, we, we recruited a guy called Peter Fowler from Essendon. Um, um, I, I don't know what year it was, 82, I think it was. Yeah. Right? And anyway, he didn't play many senior games, but um, I played a bit with him in the twos. And um, yeah, so apparently Kevin Sheedy wanted to swap Peter Fowler with me. Um, and so anyway, Hawthorne said no. So... And then it was a bit of sniffing around from uh, from St Kilda um, uh, when I was coming home, but I really had the choice. I could have stayed at Hawthorne for as long as I wanted to, because um, but for family reasons, we came back to yeah, Hobart. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. That, so well, that was the thing too, yeah. because as I mentioned before, like guys like uh, Dipper Domenico and 
all these guys like uh, General Patton yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. from South Lawn System, was he? Yeah, 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 yeah. But all those guys are playing back in those days, like it was no big, I mean they played reserves football for two years, mm. three years, like mm. Terry Wallace. Yeah. All these guys, they did their apprenticeship, if you want to call it that. Yeah. But it was, it was different then too because your age is in football too. I mean you could play to a... You know, you're Michael Tux, you can yeah. play to your 40. Or, you know, yeah, well, I, I mean, it, it, it was a bit harder if you was, yeah. I, I think, because you... So you, I played 77 games of footy at Hawthorne and 60 of them in the twos, right? So, yeah. but in the twos, I, I remember we, like you said, there were the up-and-comers. I played a lot of footy with Dermot Brereton in his first couple yeah. of years. Yeah. Um, and guys like that, Peter Schwab, Gary Ayres, were coming up through the seconds and yeah. they'd get a game yeah. in the seniors and then they'd get dropped and come back. Yeah. Um, um, and then... And then there was the older guys, guys, you know, a lot of you know, Peter Manane, Michael Moncrief, um, who were in the premiership players in the 70s who were, you know, 30 plus years of age, but mm. not in Alan Jean's plans for a long time. A lot of play, play a lot of um, footy in the twos with Don Scott. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dipper, well, there you right? go. And, and so was, was captain of the club, legend, right? Yeah. So, um, so you know, um, blokes like Peter Knights and Michael Tuck and Lee Matthews and Kelvin Moore, they didn't play too many games. No. In the but, <laughs> but, yeah, so the guys on the way out still hang around, hang around the club yeah. um, and the young blokes coming up. So it's a different era now. Well, you yeah. get cut and then you're gone. So it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a very familiar story to walk behind you, Roger Woolley. You yeah. Know, he was coming well, up yeah, against exactly. Rod Marsh. Yeah, yeah. Rod Marsh. Yeah. Marsh, yeah. And yeah. Rod Marsh yeah. And yeah. That's all right. Uh, yeah. we'll, we'll, get to this, we'll get to this shortly, but we'll talk about Matthew Wade yeah, as yeah. well. Yeah. It, pretty much in the same... You've got yeah, yeah, I, I, I always think that if you, it's only my opinion, but like if you're prepared, it's just, as you said, you either hung in yeah. and for the long road, like yeah. some of them did, dip it a minute, obviously, yeah, yeah. they hung around and hung around and eventually, you know, not yeah. going so good for that year or something, the wheels turn, they get a go, yeah. but at the end of the day, you said you had family, you had your wife, yeah. and I certainly... And to come back here too, we're still in the greatest state, I think. But uh, yeah. but the thing is too that um, the footy here was brilliant anyway. Right? So it was no. What's I was going to say when when you came here, when you came back and you've won two William Leach medals, is that right? Yeah, yeah, so, well, yeah Was, was that like after a... or before you went? No, nah, well, I finished runner up before in the William Leach medal before I went, um, and then um, and then and as I said, played a bit of state footy. So no doubt. For a Tasmanian footballer, representing your club, representing your region, then representing your state was the pinnacle. So yeah. the state games were massive in yeah. those days. Um, and then, so I was lucky enough to play in that patch of state of origin uh, games as well. So um, so that was, yeah, coming back to Tassie, there was plenty of footy incentive. I actually got paid more money to come back and play so, yeah. for Hobart than I got at Hawthorne. Wow. Right? So... Yeah. So again, it wasn't you know the the money in AFL footy was was for you know the Lee Matthews and the Peter Knights and the Michael Tucks. It wasn't necessarily for the Scott yeah, Wade. Yeah, yeah, but but I was certainly getting more money at Hobart than I was at Hawthorne. Yeah. yeah. So uh, you know, and and mm. still had the same job. Yeah. Um, and still working and, in and a bank. Place and, to live. And, and the family. Yeah. It was. It's just we um, we lost a baby in uh, when we were in in uh, Melbourne last year in. Uh, our first daughter, and then um, and then Karen was pregnant again, so she we came yeah. home for family reasons. So, but uh, no regrets. Um, yeah. I could have hung around. Although when Hawthorne started, we don't feel those flags in the eighties. <laughs> yeah. Maybe yeah. if I could have yeah, hung in for a bit, you never know. Yeah, it's, it's, it's tough. Man. <laughs> yeah, but it's a different a different environment. Then. And I'm just I'm just going to fast forward a, a long way here. Now. You still look very fit. Do you have a kick in the in the in the? Oh no, no I, I, do, I, I loved uh, I, big big Craig Hoyer. Oh, um, yeah, we mentioned yeah, we didn't mention yeah. that. Clay. So big Craig Hoyer, he was uh, drafted. Uh, he was sorry, he was on the old. It was the old form four system when mm -hmm. we went to Hawthorne, and I became great mate. Uh, I was the Tasmanian recruited, and he was the West Australian, and we became good mates. And anyway, so he talked me in to. Uh, I, I'd ask him. Uh, I coached Kingston in nineteen or Kingborough in nineteen ninety five. Um, in the last year of the old Hewan Footy Association, yeah, yeah. and I got Big Clagger to come from. I think he was playing at Hobart still. Um, he, I might have Devonport anyway. Devonport? He, yeah, it could have been Devonport. Anyway, I asked him to play. <laughs> asked him to play at Kingston, and he said he'd play at Kingston provided I played uh, Masters, AFL Masters. Now oh, I yeah. never knew what AFL Masters was. So what happened? We played the Hewan Footy Association. We won the flag, um, uh, and then we. You know, the week after, we, the week after we were in the flag, we ended up in Sydney playing in a 
AFL Masters um, Carnival in Sydney. So, and then I played in a couple, and then played for the famous Lauderdale Supercats um, <laughs> under the great Dean Newington. Um, oh, uh, yeah, and, yeah. And, that was really the highlight of your career. Eh? Well, and, so you uh, just, it's uh, just uh, come out now. And, and, and then, Dean and, Newington will fall off yeah, the chair, mate. He'll be so yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, that, yeah, but so Masters footy, no. But I, I, I don't know how many years I played. I played. I played for a year at Kingston in, in Masters, and then then must have been six yeah. six years or so at Lauderdale, and that was good I, fun. Yeah, it was. I pulled a, I, I, I pulled my first uh, ever hamstring in Masters down at Sorrell one Sunday morning, and then really? I ended up in the goal square, and I ended up in the goal square because there were never enough players, and then I pulled the other hamstring. <laughs> oh said, no, really? That's, no, that's, really? That's it. I retired. So you, much. you tell yeah, me well. all the time you played football, you <laughs> had another hamstring. No. Nah. No, well, sorry, I I tell a lie. Speak, I did. I, to, I, 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 I was playing. <laughs> I, I was playing. Uh, I was playing. I did the preseason for Clarence in 19, 90, uh, 1996. Yeah. Uh, sorry, nineteen ninety seven, um, when I was thirty seven years of age. So I was lucky enough to. Um, I was lucky enough to play some, get some premiership success with Clarence, late in my career. Um, yeah. But in, in the pre-season of 1997, when I was 37 years of age, I was actually going really well. I was fit and I was firing and, and I was going to play another year. And, and just before the season started, I pulled my first ever hamstring and said, like, I, I think time's That's up. <laughs> right. so, and, then I, and then I played a bit of Masters after that. But, yeah, um, no, I still, I still um, do a lot of running. I was lucky enough I didn't have too many uh, leg injuries. So... Yeah. Um, I work at the Kingborough Sports Precinct now, and so I spend a fair bit of time in the gym, on the treadmill doing research and development. Um, <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah, we got a fitness centre down there, so I kept myself pretty fit. So yeah, my, yeah. My, my running times are probably better than they were when I was forty. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll keep going for a bit longer. Yet. Scott, I'm just going to throw us over a little bit to your son at the moment, Matthew Wade, um, tremendous cricket player. Uh, before we even start talking about him, just want to know. Did you have the ability in cricket as well as football? And, and <laughs> well, what, does, yeah, Matthew, what was your does Matthew have the ability in football as well as cricket he as well? Do, he could he have gone down that path? Yeah, yeah well, um, so yeah, yeah, most, most, most guys that went to, you know, I was a public school system guy, most of the guys that went to public school played cricket, but very, uh, cricket and footy and, yeah. and then had a bit of dabble with basketball and whatever yeah. else was yeah. going around, but pretty much, you know, pretty much representing the school cricket team and the school footy team is what you're... You know, if you're a sporty person, that's what you. Mm. It's almost that was your ambition. So, yeah, I played a bit of cricket. I played in a state under fifteen team um, uh, with David when David Boone was captain. Well, so yeah, with Boone yeah. and all the same age. So, um, but yeah, I wasn't much good. Um, um, but you know, I was I, I was at maybe a um, maybe at a first grade level in in Tasmania. But um, but I I actually played in the Derwent. Uh, I, I I pretty quickly. Um, you know, committed to footy, uh, and then I played uh, for the Derwent Cricket Club, which was the old man played. My brother played for the Derwent Cricket Club for a while um, in the old City Association. Tony, the great Tony Martin, when I first met him because yeah, we played cricket together at Derwent. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, yeah, so yeah, I, I was just an average cricketer. I didn't really, yep. I, I you know, I didn't really like the game that much. Um, and then Matthew, well, he. He's really a footballer, not a cricketer, to be quite honest. Right. Right. So he yeah, he, yeah, he, didn't, he didn't he didn't um he was Paris, didn't he? yeah well he, he was a Lauderdale he was a Lauderdale junior yeah, right yeah. so he started his football um you know I think he would have been a, a a Lauderdale cat and then in his time they changed the Lauderdale Bombers but he so his footy club's Lauderdale um and uh, and he then played he played one year at Clarence that's only because. The pathway then Lord and I weren't in the top league and yeah, Clarence was, were and then was, he, he played one year at Clarence but but really his footy club's Lauderdale and uh, played senior footy at Lauderdale. Uh, but he, yeah, he was vice captain of Tassie Mariners. He came he came through the same um, they had a pretty um, gun team in his era, you know, Jack Rewalt, Grant yeah, Virtual, yeah, Mitch yeah. Thorpe, yeah. those sorts of guys yeah. and he Sammy Lonigan, um, he was the vice captain of that team, so he wasn't he wasn't far off an no, AFL player, no. um, but not quite. Probably a different, you know. He, he was quite. He was a sort of really a, a power, a small power forward. Yeah. Um, yeah. So 
Yeah. And they didn't in that in that sort of era they didn't really pick small power forwards. But um, mm. in a different era, he may have committed. But um, he got right. his chance. He's got his chance at cricket. He's done all right. Well, he got his chance at cricket. He he um, went to the Clarence Cricket Club, and then um, a guy called Scotty Mason, who unfortunately passed away, was mm -hmm. a state cricketer. But Matthew yeah. Matthew was playing. He got his first taste a little. Uh, he was playing second grade when he was fourteen, yeah. and then. And then uh, Scotty Mason got in a two-day game, got selected to play for Tasmania. So that means Scotty played the first week um, for Clarence, and then Matthew replaced Scotty Mason. And then he, on his debut against Newtown, out of, and Newtown he made 67 or something, opening the baton for for Clarence, and then never looked back really. In that same year, when he just turned he just turned 15, he made a, um, a century in Clarence's. Premiership team of that year yep. um, against Glenorchy. So really, that was cricket, and pretty much after that, he went to, uh, or straight after that cricket season, then um, they played the under nineteen championships, and he made a century against Victoria, a century against New South Wales, and, and then Booney was the head man at cricket at that time, and just you know signed him up pretty much straight yeah, away, yeah. and then he ended up in going to Victoria. Victoria. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, but he played in, he was captain of Victoria, and he's now captain of Tasmania, so he's played in. You know, four or five Sheffield Shields for, right. for Victoria. He's, so, yeah. he's uh, yeah. played a good ambassador. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, obviously extremely uh, proud of what he's achieved. But, the way, the way but he was more a footballer. Yeah. 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 He, he, yeah. His, his favourite game would be football. He, yeah, so he liked football much more than cricket. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So he'd still think he can play football, I reckon. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Get him in the super. <laughs> no, he reckons he's not super. Uh, rule. Yeah, super. Rule. He That's reckons. Uh, so his club now is OHA. He's got mates that play the OHA. So. Oh, he he would. Uh, he, he he reckons he's going to finish his. Is that right? He's going to play football at OHA before he, you know, dust. You know, finish his sport. The ships, are they? The ships, but I don't. I don't know whether. I don't know whether that. Right? Yeah, do know whether that <laughs> he will do that. But anyway, you yeah, think yeah. That, oh, most most guys that can. It's a bit like Pony, you know. Most guys that played footy and cricket think they're better footballers than they really are. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, he, he was a pretty decent <laughs> footballer. Yeah. yeah. Um, so Scott Matthews now in New Zealand. Yes. Um, they've been in quarantine over there. Yep. Um, back out practicing now. What's What's the thought been like? I mean, it must be so hard for these guys with this pandemic and, and being yeah. in quarantine and being in hubs, especially you know with the the BBL being away from from your families. And what's the stuff? Has he mentioned anything on that? Well, I've only seen him once since. Uh, so I saw him when they first when he played the first test. Um, I saw him once. Um, I, I saw him before he went, and then basically I've only seen him once since they played all that test series. Really? So I spoke to him on the phone a bit, but you know Matt is just uh, most of those guys when they talk to their family, they don't like to talk about cricket because no. they just come home to their family, want to talk about family stuff and kids and, and yep. all that sort of stuff. So I don't speak much uh, cricket um, to him, but yeah, we obviously know him well enough to know that he's not the sort of person that would like a hub environment. Um, yeah. So I think I think. Yeah, I, I don't think it's an enjoyable environment, and I certainly know from um, the AFL guys that I've um, spoken to, it's yeah, not much fun. So, how they got through that hub stuff last it's year in the AFL cool. and cricket, yeah. and some of the guys, some of the guys that Matt played with, you know, the other guys that played in the IPL, you know, Warner and Smith and Cummins and Co. They, you know, that they've been living in a bubble for you know months and months and mm -hmm. months. But yeah, so it's not not That's fun. Good, it's not fun, That's but. Um, so they've done a really good job to um, play the game, but mm. yeah, in terms of you've got to feel sorry for them a bit because mm. I know a lot of people will go oh, and feel sorry for them and get a lot of money, but no. it's not all about money. It's a big, um, sac yeah. it's a big <laughs> sacrifice. Yes. I reckon until you're in that hub, yeah. you wouldn't know. Right. Yeah. We don't, we, I know what it was like when we were shut down here, and I, oh, I was I'm, I'm I, climbing I, the I was, I was all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was all right. I, I had plenty going on. Yeah. A few games of dance, but, but I mean, apart from that, but. But like he's, he's, must be bloody hard. he's done an amazing job, and um, so yeah, we're all very proud of him. And uh, hopefully, we yeah, hopefully he can get a run back in the in the well, test team. Well, he's the again, captain so. of the uh, captain or vice captain. He's vice captain, captain of the, he's vice captain captain of, the, of, the, of the of the uh, one T yeah, twenty T twenty stuff. Yeah, yeah, so, and, yeah. yeah. And we hope he gets a run in the. He should get a run in the one day. Yeah, well, he's not far away, so I think in the end, look, he, he's done a remarkable job. Like, we're really, the proudest moment from Should a family proud, perspective yeah, is, is that when he actually got dropped and got back in, because, yeah. like, I don't actually think there's ever been a wicketkeeper um, 
uh, you know, an Australian wicketkeeper who's got dropped and then come back and been selected as a batsman. Right? Yeah, so, yeah. so you know, for him to you know put away the gloves for a while and um, and then get selected for Australia as a batsman was a pretty proud moment. Yeah, um, and so, anyway, he didn't quite. He, he didn't quite. Um, you know, it's all about winning when you get to cricket. I know. Mm. I know they said it's not about winning, but it, it is, is all about winning. It is all about winning. And in the end, look, he's. He, you know, it is what it is, and he's pretty philosophical about it. And um, I, you know, he's, he's probably I haven't spoken to him, but he's probably just uh, he's probably turning his focus to white ball cricket now. So yeah. you know, he's he's done pretty well with the Hurricanes the last few years, and so yeah. Um, yeah. you know, so see how he goes in the white ball game. Yeah. yeah. Do you do you? Glenn and I talk about this a lot. You know, the, the Australian cricketers they give in the team, and if you know if they're not the oh hello, thank you very much. If they're not. <laughs> You know the backbone, like the Tim Payne and the, the Clarks and the Warners and stuff. Uh, the, the pressure on these guys to actually hit a score, and if you don't hit a score in the back of your mind, oh no, I'm going to lose my spot. I've got to, I've got yeah. to perform. Well, that's got to be so hard for them. Well, I think you know, I think the second time round, and certainly it was hard the first time round. So because uh, when you when you're trying to make it, um, and there's been plenty of people, um, you know, who've played you know only a handful of tests, right? Um, but yeah, you're one way, you're one test away from locking your spot in, and then you're one test away from losing exactly, your spot. So, exactly. yeah. but yeah, like you said, unless you're the um, mm. Steve Smith, Dave Warner's, you know, Pat Cummins, Mitchell Starks, yeah. Nathan Lyons, it's there, cemented. those guys are in a different story. But yeah, but that's that's what it is. Like, uh, if you make it, you make it. If you don't, you, you don't. Know, you you know, just yeah. get on. Yeah, if yeah, yeah, yeah. Only, you can only have eleven players. Yeah, that's it. it's, you yeah. talk about Australia, hard to get in, and, yeah. then, and then you know people that come over from other countries, and they, uh, you know, they, they come here and they, yeah. you know, yeah, they're signing it up too. Oh, so, getting, getting back to football, one of the things that Glenn always says, you know, to, to get one game in AFL, AFL, you're a superstar. Well, we we interviewed a guy who probably I reckon Scott may have come across, uh, Roger. Oh, Pottlesack, Pottlesack. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, right. Guy Roger, Roger Pottlesack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he only played. I think I've got right six to seven games for North Melbourne. Oh yeah. He played on. I can remember one of the uh, comments he said he played at Victoria Park, and he said his race to fame was he beat Phil Manasseh on the day. He got in the voting. Yeah. He said he should have got three. Got two. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm gonna, I, I reckon I'm gonna cracker of a guy. Yeah. He's absolutely cracker of a guy. And uh, I, I look. I said he said I was great. He played. I said, mate, you played back in those days. I said it doesn't matter if now you get be. I said you got to go. Yeah. Well, I, I, I reckon I've got a better story than that. Close. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. Was... So my debut was against Collingwood. Yes. And and. I don't know, the, the second last round. Um, so my, my first two games were pretty memorable. So, yeah, Hawthorne played Collingwood at Victoria Park. Um, Did you say we win? Uh, and we won. <laughs> yes. 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 Yes, and we won. So we won the first game and I got in the best players. Oh, really? Oh, no. But I was 19th man, yep. right? And the and I, I claim I was 19th man and the other, the 20th man was a bloke called Gary Ablett. No. Right, right. So I we back in those we, we both came onto the ground and we won the game and we both got in the best players and between the two of us we've turned in the legends of the game. Right? So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, Gary. You win. <laughs> so Gary, uh, no, Gary Ablett was one of the most interesting characters I ever played footy with. Um, uh, he wouldn't even remember who I was, but uh, but you know the most talented bloke you can ever imagine who. Yeah. who didn't train much at all at Hawthorne, and he just didn't. He didn't fit into the Hawthorne culture, right. but he right. was a pretty special player, um, as we all know. And then my second game, which is the last game for the year, which we also won, um, was against uh, Melbourne at the old Princess Park when Mark Jackson did all of his oh, hands. Hand, hand, so hand, so, so my, my, I was pretty chuffed at the back end of 1981. That was, um, to you know, I thought AFL footy or VFL footy then. I thought it was pretty. Spectacular, you know. Collingwood, um, you know the the senior players just said, "Look, be be careful." I, I didn't really uncomprehend it, but be careful when you're going through the race because just be careful of umbrellas, right? <laughs> right? Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. And 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 they'll spit on you, right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Um, so there was a lot of that. There was a lot of ducking with ducking umbrellas, away, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, and a fair bit of other stuff, but um, but you know. The Collingwood crowd was amazing. In other days, you know, 
uh, people used to stand on the, you know, take an esky to the footy and stand on the hill. So pretty spectacular. Right, talk time. about your story. Yeah. <laughs> I've actually fallen through one. Day. <laughs> <laughs> no, one no one told me it was fun. Once, once again, Roger, Roger Pottle said he's playing, he's playing against Collingwood and he said the same thing. He said they were told stay away from, stay away from. Yeah. And he's down in the race and they're all yelling at what happened to him and saying, oh, these people are quite nice. He's got big, long hair, he's telling us. Yeah, yeah I'll never he, he gets into the shower and he's full of chewing gum. Yeah. They just <laughs> chewing gum. <laughs> <on him. laughs> Good old calling the I actually, yeah, I actually <laughs> went out, I remember a couple of years ago, I made a couple of cobbers, uh, brother and that, we went into Victoria Park. You still get in there. Yeah, yeah. And sit up there and have a, have a look at it. But one thing had changed. I spoke to one guy going around, this old fella, and he said, change room still look the same. What was it, Cole Shows, was it? Yeah, that, that was the yeah. room where it was Carl Shaft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. when you see the old footage of those games, um, Victoria Park or down at the Lake Oval or something like that, it's it, it totally different, wasn't it, than oh, what, yeah. what we've got now. We, you know, you've got manicured grounds Jeez, and yeah, you know, yeah. roof over. Oh, and, yeah. You know, you've got the MCG's always been the, the heart and soul of yeah. but so all, these, Park. all these guys you've been talking about and played with and stuff, do you still talk to them or do you go, oh, do you go to any yeah, of well, it's, in, it's interesting um, with Matthew, you know, um, uh, playing cricket for Australia and Victoria. And they spent plenty of time in Melbourne or around the place, you know, watching them every now and then. You bump into blokes. So, uh, you know, you, I bumped into the Dermot at the MCG. Um, I bumped into Lee at a cricket game yeah. um, somewhere and... Um, but yeah, I was more, my guys, my guy, I was more sort of friendly with, so again, Tasmania, they hook you up with, you, know, you mentioned before, you know, we had uh, uh, Rocket Eid and uh, Ian Payton and Colin yeah, Robinson right, and Colin myself, Robinson. right, so so the Tasmanian boys were quite, you know, they take the you-know-what out of us, but we all stuck together a bit, so, yep. so Rocket in particular sort of looked after me a bit early doors, um, mm. and then uh, and then you, you start to get your networks, but Melbourne's such a big place as they... You know, you come into train and it's like a normal, you know, normal footy club in Tasmania. But then, you know, they live so far away from one another, you just go out into your normal group. So socially, it's more about where people live within the club, right? Yeah, so yeah. I lived in Hawthorne, like I said, and um, um, Craig Hoyer just lived around the corner and Peter Swab didn't live far away. And so it was more about, you know, and we were about similar age, Peter Swab, Gary Ayres, mm. folks called Mark Turner, um, King Kershaw, all that, these, some of these folks that not um, that we played a lot of footy in the twos. And Dipper was only just around the corner. Andy Bennett was around the corner. Oh, so yeah, it's more, you're, you're more used to, yeah, yeah more, more you're used to, you know, we, we all lived in sort of Hawthorne, Campbell, sort of Baldwin sort of area. And so you're more socialised where you live. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so the blokes that live down there, you know, Dermot and Kelvin Moore and Lee, they lived down the Mornington Peninsula. Um, so, you know, and yeah, you know, so it was more about where you live um, rather than, um, and then you come into training and then you mm. socialise. Like, like Waverley, what was that like? I mean, because that's, yeah. that's where you, I mean, that was, I can remember going that's there and, I'm going well, back now, but I can remember one game there, Malcolm Blight, it's like, it's been on the replay, isn't it? I was there that day, yeah. he, he's in the mud. Yeah. And he's, he's, 10 metres out and he kicked the ball. Yeah. Well, we, we, um, I mean, it, was, my, it was like an Antarctic blast there. Yeah, it was, it was my cold. first, my, uh, the three years I was there, Hawthorne was still based at Glen Ferry, so that was our training yeah. venue, obviously, Glen Ferry, but um, there were all the signs of, um, you know, he, we never played games at Glen Ferry. We, um, first year, I think, we played most of our home games at uh, uh, Princess Park, and we shared Princess Park. With you know, there was Carlton Fitzroy and Hawthorne yeah. playing when we played most of our games there, and then uh, second and third years, um, a lot of footy out at Waverley, right? So Hawthorne, um, Hawthorne and St Kilda used to play a lot of footy at Waverley, um, but I remember yeah, it was my you know one of the experiences being a Tassie boy coming in. Um, you know, I'd never been in a change room like Waverley, so Waverley was the state of the art. Walked in, and the memory only had twenty players, but there were twenty two showers, right? So. And we got <laughs> 22 shower heads. I go, wow, how good's this? Go, right. You can actually have your own shower. <laughs> so, and so there was a shower for the runner and there was a shower for the coach. I can remember when I was at North Hobart and they used to have two trainers. And funny because you, you obviously later on you played at Clarence, but it was funny when I left 
Clarence and went to North Hobart, uh, sorry, North Hobart to Clarence, and I got over there and they had like four to five trainers and all these, you know, and I meant the, the facilities. Uh, it was like, even though North was an old club, mm. like Hobart yeah. and all that, but, but Clarence was just, yeah, like, very professional. I suppose it's the way. Well, I went from. Uh, I went from. I'm you know, pretty sure the Hobart Footy Club. All the years I was at the Hobart Footy changed, Club. I reckon I played ten <laughs> years at Hobart. I reckon they had four shower heads. Yeah, so so Waverley, like Waverley was the yeah, palace, but yeah. Well, that's the greatest grounds down here. The TCA, they're not going back. Yeah. Uh, beautifully playing down at Queenborough. Oh, yeah, terrible. I wouldn't see your end on the other side no, of the terrible. ground. Queen Same Bar. at Clarence. Yep. If you was on one side of the ground back yep. then, you'd, you'd just see the other guy yep. on the other side of the wing. And of course now, I mean, look at it yeah, now. Beautiful. Playing cricket, yeah. beautiful. You know, but yeah. that's, that's, that's good. That, well, it was a great experience. It's great that it's changed. It was I mean, a great experience you know, playing at Boyer. Boyer was a oh, beautiful Boyer was, ground. Boy, yeah. it was a great ground and um, fun playing up there. Yeah, oh, yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> I nearly played for you, Norfolk. But anyway, um, no. But they were they were great. The tribal, um, yeah, it was tribal then. So, it was. Um, but the great the, the quality of the facilities, apart from Queenborough, I, I never liked playing no, Queenborough um, because yeah, it was yeah. You know, yeah, I called it the Hobart tip and got into trouble. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway. Well, you were right. <laughs> but, but, it, but it was, yes. it, it was interesting. Oh, I thought Boyer and, uh, in my time. Um, it was beautiful. Uh, but in, so my two stages of the, of the career, really, I uh, sort of, I started off the career in, uh, um, in the TFL, just the regional comp, the six teams. And then, you know, I was proud. I was really fortunate. I, 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 I enjoyed statewide footy better than regional footy. Yeah. Um, because we used to, you know, we used to play the same teams four times a year, game, and yeah. then, um, yeah. but to play, to play against the best players. Because I remember the first state game I played was um, against Queensland at the Gabba. Um, Peter Daniel was coach, and Hutto oh, was in the team. He and was Barry, yeah, 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 Daniel. yeah. Uh, sorry, Barry Lawrence was a coach. Peter Daniel was in the team, yeah. and and Hutto, and um, those three guys: Barry Lawrence, Peter Hudson, and mm -hmm. Peter Daniel. We're really instrumental in uh, Tasmania ever having a statewide league. So mm -hmm. it was because we, and it all stemmed from my first take home. We played Queensland at the Gabba and yep. we got beaten, right? And uh, and like, it was like the world was going to end as far as these. John Greening was in so that team too. Beaten, like no, the guys up there, so no. no. So, there, so, so yeah, you know, they still had the dog track around the Gabba. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, yeah. But anyway, long story short, there was a bit of a, there was a few crisis. I mean, I was only young fellows, eighteen years of age, and crisis meetings about you know got to do something about Tassie footy. And those guys, those guys were instrumental in all of that. And so um, they were really the instigators of because I got on the plane playing with blokes I'd never even met, no. right? And so um, you just it, we, you, you can't Tasmania couldn't compete against these developing states, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, when when they were just yeah like three quarters of the team I've never of, actually even met right no, so um so anyway we um yeah and so statewide league footy I really enjoy that playing against the best players in the north um, yeah. and a lot of people forget you know when I was you know, fortunate enough to um, you know be the CEO of AFL Taz um, is that people forget there were it was actually is almost seventy percent of all participants. Of AFL footy mm -hmm. now it's changed a bit now, but almost seventy percent of the clubs yep. are in the north, yeah, okay. right, mm -hmm. and thirty percent in the south. And of that, there's actually there's the same number of football clubs in the north on the northwest coast, coast than there yeah. is in Hobart, yeah. right? And so, yeah, right. like footy's massive, footy's much stronger in the northern half of the state than it is in the south, yeah. right? Um, uh, it just the, the advantage of the south is we're close and we've got two hundred and fifty thousand people, so we've got fifty percent of the population, so. When we get together as one, we can actually beat the North. But yeah. if the North got themselves together as one, yeah, um, yeah. We, we'd struggle. So they're, they're, so the, the footy culture, though, in the northern half of the state is really is, is strong. And sometimes the, sometimes the Southerners uh, disrespect that and, or don't even think about it. Right? So uh, you know, that's always been a challenge for Tassie. Because, but footy, footy is stronger in the do, North. Do you think that's been the problem? Sorry, I, I was just going to say that. I know this keeps getting thrown up, and I think we're all sick of it. I used to get sick of it, but 
you know, the, the north-south bit, you know, who's best, where this should be and all yes. that. But I, I can, you know, as you said, you go back and you know, we commented off here, I just went up there recently, but you're right, I can remember going back to even high school and whether you played Penguin or it didn't matter what side it was up there, be basketball, football, cricket, super competitive, oh, yeah, super very strong. Competitive. Yeah. And they were, it, it was, that was what they thrived on and, and they had some great sportsmen. Yeah. Launceston... Mm, as well, so like I'm not to say North East Coast, but mm. there's a lot of good sports that come from up that. Well, I think I think it would be fair to say I think it would be fair to say that um, you know some of the greats of the game uh, of not just AFL but um, and so you know there's the the uh, yeah the older generation which is the Bulldogs, Hudson, oh, Bulldogs Hearts and Stewart yeah. right, but but you know the uh, Matthew Richardsons and the oh, Alistair right. Lynches and and the Rawlings brothers and you know Birchall. Roach, now, uh, Roach, 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 yeah, yeah. So, but the northwest coast and um, mm-hmm. but and, and and you know, I think in the end, I think it, I, I think it's unfortunate that um, the perception is that Tasmania can't work together, but it's actually rubbish. We can work together, That's right? Because right. because when we come to you know, I talk about I was fortunate enough to play twenty six games for Tasmania, right? Yes. And I think I think Michael Honeybill holds the record, and he's about twenty eight, and I'm twenty six, and and so. We yeah. were, there was lots of state footy then, so yeah. I, I was fortunate enough to play lots of state footy, and and what and fortunate enough to play, and you know I'm only one of forty two blokes that played in a game that beat where we beat the Vicks, oh, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah. so, so North that, yeah, North Hobart in nineteen ninety. So, right. um, so we, you know, Tasmania when they come together as Tasmania, we can we can work as one, yeah. um, and just you know I hope that. You know, before I pull up stumps, I hope we do have an AFL team. Yeah. Because um, well, it's the only, gonna, it's right. the only way forward. Yeah, yeah. Right. Can, we, can we go into that? I mean, just a little bit for, for our viewers to, to understand where you've come from. So you're uh, your CEO, you were uh, the manager of yeah, football. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, so I was the CEO of, a, 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 of the governing body. Yep. Of, um, so it was started off Football Tasmania Limited and then became, became AFL Tasmania. Yep. Um, and it was uh, uh, under my time. It was a uh, it was independent to the AFL, which is quite different than it is now. Yeah. So it's not independent now. Um, so the company AFL Tasmania in my time was actually owned by the three regions and the AFL. They were the shareholders. Um, now it's a wholly owned subsidiary of the AFL. So um, yeah, look, you know, uh, lots of people, you know. Um, you know, I polarise lots of opinions, but in the end, we're not too fussed about it. Um, you know, we had some really good quality people sitting around the board table. The current CEO of AFL Tasmania was, Don Baker was the, the chairman of AFL Tasmania for a decade. On, on that board, we had Brendan Gale. Yep. Um, we had Scott, Scott Clayton, so. Scott Clayton, who's a, yeah. a great Brisbane Tasmanian. And we, had, we, had a guy called, um, we had a guy called Ian Chesterman, who's now the vice uh, president of the Australian Olympic Committee. Um, we had one of Tasmania's mm-hmm. leading, um, or not one of Tasmania's probably leading sports administrator in, in Brian Rowe. Um, and we had James Henderson, who um, yeah. runs his own business, and James is a Tasmanian. These are all Tasmanians. That, yeah. Some, yeah, yeah. James, but he, you know, amongst other things, he's you know, Ricky Ponting's manager and yeah. Alistair Clarkson's manager and yeah. and the manager of you know, plenty of other... Um, and good quality sports people. So we had we had a we had an interesting board, and, but very very long story short because it, it is a long story. Mm, but yeah. Tasmanian football can't move forward without our own AFL team. Like mm. we just can't move forward. It's a, and and it's disappointing that you'll always get a minority of people go, oh, we can't afford it, or it'll never happen, right? But that's fine. That's fine. But it, actually, Tasmanian footy can't get any better. Unless and we're in the, unless no. we're in the big league, so oh, yeah. that's the only way forward. Mm-hmm. Now, Tasmanian footy will survive even if we're not in the. It survived for 150 years without us being in the AFL, and it'll still survive, but it won't move forward. It'll yeah. just it'll do, it'll slowly but surely decay, um, mm-hmm. but it'll still survive the test of time because footy footy clubs are good, like Penguin Footy Club, La Trobe Footy Club. You know, my I was, some of the great footy clubs are Scottsdale Footy Club. Yeah. Winyard Footy Club, yep. right? And then you know, one of my proudest moments, to be quite honest, is seeing the evolution of the Lauderdale Footy Club. Yeah. Right? 
So when I first became CO, they were in Division Four, basically. Well, right. Well, yep. I was there. I mean, I used yep. to play yep. against them. I was yep. at Lindisfarne. Yeah. And we were amateur. Yeah. Footballers. And yep. then, and and to see that, and they were a struggling club. Yeah. So and, I'm, I'm, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. And so then in Kingborough, right? So, yeah. so in the end, and to see the facilities down at Kingborough yeah. that they've yeah. got, um, <clears throat> and you know, so, so there are lots of good stories, and you see in my time. You know the development of uh, York Park. Yeah. It's been a massive, wow. right? Yeah. And then, mm. you know, in my time, we when I started at AFL Tasmania, we had no AFL games, and now we've got eight. Now, were mm. you part of that? Yeah, you yeah, I was part of that. Yeah, 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 I was part of. Yeah. So I was part of that first sort of task force. So, um, Peter yeah. Hudson sort of really yeah. led the charge, yeah. right? Um, but really, it became, you know, I remember uh, Andrew Demetrio as the CEO of the AFL, and I remember. I was the taxi driver. Um, <laughs> uh, I was the taxi driver. Um, I drove. Basically, the deal was done with Hawthorne in a trip that I was driving, and Andrew Demetrio was pretty much on the phone for two hours organising AFL footy yep. for Tasmania on the way from Hobart to Launceston, and mm -hmm. you know, pretty much got the deal done, right? So, um, so it was, uh, you know, we Hawthorne just by Hawthorne. We're just going to play one game. Yep. And they made so much money in the first game, they pr pretty quickly played yeah. two. Yeah. And then St Kilda came and, and look, um, uh, unfortunately, I think what's evolved, Hawthorne's been 20 years now. Oh, oh, what Tasmania owes Hawthorne and North Melbourne is that we now know that we can actually have our own team, yeah. right? Yeah. But but the game hasn't improved. With that. With Hawthorne and North Melbourne being here, the game hasn't improved. No. Right? Yeah. Could it be a, a, and this has been thrown around for since time, but could it be a standalone side? Obviously, we'd have to be like a GWS, Brisbane Lions. We'd have to be getting, you know, all the kids from, yeah. you know, the recruiting and that, you know. Or do, do we need to, or do you think we'd have to get a, I know you won't like it, but I mean, I'll, I'll use a side. Well, Western Bulldogs, then. Oh. We, won't use, we won't use North Melbourne. <laughs> <North, laughs> but do we need to relocate a side? Is that rubbish? Or... In your, I mean, it's only your opinion, so all our opinions. So, is, is that the way to go? Get a side over it, or what? Start from scratch, get the best young kids, get the recruits that G, uh, the Gold Coast get, and then start from there. If we had our own side. So, so yeah. it's a two seconds, Scott. Sorry, Are you running out of power, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Do you want that? Or you want the? <laughs> Thanks. Do you want the cord? Yeah, button. So, yeah. We're on. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I think the best option for Tasmania is a team of our own. Yeah. Yep. Um, um, but, you know, again, in my time, it was interesting that we had... The, the, the plan... There was a point in time where the plan was North Melbourne was going to become our team, right? Yeah. So the plan was that... Um, and it was all endorsed. The plan, the plan was that North Melbourne was going to take over Hawthorne's content. So Hawthorne was, uh, North Melbourne was going to play seven games in Tasmania. And then they were still going to be North Melbourne, they were still going to be at Arden Street, but the strategy was that if Tasmania had more members than North Melbourne, then you go to a vote and you yeah, relocate yeah. the team to Tasmania, yeah. right? So a bit yeah. like South Melbourne became the Sydney Swans, yeah. right? So um, that was the plan, but I think that horse has bolted. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I think that a team of our own is the best option for Tasmania. Um, if the AFL said you can't have a team of your own but you can have a relocated team, well, we'd be mad not to take it, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, Sydney has worked. Mm -hmm. Sydney, you know, again, yeah. in, I was lucky enough to, um, in 1982, is their for Sydney's first, South Melbourne's first year of playing in Sydney. I, I was lucky yeah. enough to play a senior game at the SCG against um, South Melbourne, yeah. right? Um, at the SCG. So, um, and of course, I was lucky enough then to... Um, you know, Mark Browning came down and coached Hobart yeah. my last year at Hobart and then obviously Steve, the great Stevie Wright yeah. um, um, co coach Clarence you know, the back end of my career so sort of got some you know, lots of understanding of the difficulties that they, they went through but Sydney's been a real success story mm -hmm. in the AFL and you know, it could work for Tasmania as well but the best case scenario would be our own team so, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, a, that's a joke for you mate mm -hmm. because uh, 
I think I was 26 and they tried to pull me out of amateurs and the great Tubby Burton. Oh, yeah. I played in the representative side and you were up there and he pulled me up and I went to Hobart. I actually got it after all that time. Now the clearance, I went back to Hobart. I went up there and did all the pre-season. I remember Mark Browning had a look at me and said, Jesus, lad, he said, you... You'd lose some weight, mate. He said, you, you put, a, put on a little bit there. And, <laughs> and any rate, I trained and I trained and I trained. But right. back in those days, it was funny. We yeah. were training at Brophy High School. Yeah, yeah. And I got up there and I, I actually got myself pretty damn fit because he got me fit. Yeah. And they're running up and down hills and got to the first game and he, this is why I'm going to say this. Thing. And uh, I remember that Scotty Brain, he was handballing the ball yeah. and then I, I grabbed it and I said, oh, you know, I'm feeling good and got picked to play Glenorchy and I thought, oh, well, my first game for over. Snapped my first hamstring. <laughs> <laughs> 26 or what? Yeah, and that's why I'm having a go at you because I don't believe you did yours in March. No, no. And I tell you, I was 36. It was, it, was, yeah. it, was, it, was, it, it was relentless. It was relentless after that. Hamstrings, groin. Yeah. No, 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 no. Very good. Break Very down, mate. If I was also, would have shot me. <laughs> so, I, I've got to ask. Um, uh, Glenn, Glenn and I used to go to the Tassie Devils. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we, did. With, we loved it. With 50 other loved people it. every every fortnight or whatever it was. Well, us. Uh, yeah. yeah. There was a lot of people there. <laughs> we were yeah. lucky enough Which to see on. Ian Callan and, and, yeah. and young Gapens then and all those guys in Thurley and, and yeah. just coming through for their drink, yeah. didn't we? Yeah, yeah. and, and it was, it was good. I enjoyed it. Enjoyed it. Uh, the VFL stopped and I'm going to ask you the reason why, but I'm gathering it was because there just wasn't enough support behind it. No, that's not the reason, really. Um, I think, um, you know, we thought we did a lot of good things, but I think I think we, we the people involved in that whole Devils program, there are a lot of good people involved in The reality is we stuffed it up, I think, right? Mm -hmm. Now, um, and we stuffed it up because it became the Hobart Devils and not the Tasmanian Devils. So when it... When it, when it um, and we we were chasing a premiership. That's what we were chasing. So it was a good learning experience. But it's actually you got to think. That it's not about the short term. It's about the long term. So it's not about the next. And when I say long term, I'm talking about um, the the short term in footy. Really, is a decade because yeah. it just goes like that, oh, right? Yeah. So ten years can just go like that, right? So we were more, we were yeah. thinking too short. We were thinking the next two, three years yeah, okay. instead of thinking what's it going to look like in 20 years' time, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. so that's when that the reference to the we stuffed it up. Now, what, what happened is that we lost the support of the North. I, I mentioned before yeah. about the North. So, Could I understand that? So you, is that because the games were played here yeah. and not up there? Yeah, yeah so what happened time. is that, what happened is the first few years in the Devils, I remember, in fact, I remember the first year because Tassie actually... Yeah, we purchased games. Is uh, we played more home game. We played more home games. I think we had, you know, eleven or twelve, thirteen could have been home games in Tasmania. But we played, I think, year one. We played two games on the northwest coast, four games in Launceston, and four games in Hobart. Right? Um, yeah, it must have been ten to start with. Right. So, um, and then it changed slightly, but we played in all three regions, um, and we stopped that. Right, we we basically it become more about Hobart, and we come more about mm. getting the good kids come down to Hobart, the, more the cricket model. Yeah, okay. Um, and we lost the support of the North, mm. right? So then, so w the support wasn't really, and then it, 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 interestingly, then we partnered with North Melbourne, which which by the way we were encouraged to by the government because the government knew that there was the Hawthorne thing was going really well in Hawthorne. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, St Kilda actually wanted to play in Hobart, not in Launceston, but politics took over and Jim Bacon said, no, all the games will be in, in Launceston. St Kilda had been playing in, in Hobart, yeah. hadn't they? No, 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 up north. Oh, uh, they, they, up they north. But, no, but they, they wanted to play in yeah. Hobart. Yeah. So yeah. What, yeah. what St Kilda wanted to do, St Kilda wanted Hawthorne to be the team in the north and St Kilda to be the team mm -hmm. in the south. Right. That would have been a better outcome, mm -hmm. right, because we probably would have... The South would have partnered with St Kilda, I think, who would have been more um, engaged with the Southern community yeah. than North Melbourne yeah. um, probably were. Yeah. Um, but at any rate, we part North Ballarat and Tasmania did a three-way deal together. Yeah. So we were in this partnership arrangement because you couldn't actually win a premiership. So those those players you mentioned, um, you know, the Gapen brothers and Callan and, 
and beams and yeah, beams, and, yeah. and, yeah. and Platt and all these guys, all these guys that were really good quality players for the Devils when you know it was a great program. The Devils was a great yeah, program. But the players wanted to win a premiership and, yeah. and we wanted them to win a premiership. But um, so that's the reference that I meant, um, stuffed it up. And then, and then unfortunately, the players lost faith in Matthew Armstrong, um, yeah. and which they now regret. Um, but they lost faith in Matthew Armstrong, and then the, that was the end of it, right? So, um, uh, but yeah, but fundamentally, it was about we lost the support of the North. Yeah. 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 So okay. it's, it, it's, it is disappointing. I mean, that, that's. As I said, we we spoke about it. That's continued on. That's is it? It's a, just 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 on that. It's, it's like the Gold Coast and Brisbane. Yeah, you're up there. Yeah, so you're yeah. in Brisbane. Yeah, you know, Gold Coast. You got Titans. You had the Broncos. You you know, I know that came later. Yeah, the Crushes. Oh yeah, the Crushes. Yeah, well you did too. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, Sorry, you did too. Yeah. So, yeah. but it's the same deal. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, you're on the radio all, all, all the time way. about yeah. how you know the uh, rugby league, soccer, basketball. They they're trying to get in because they know that AFL or Australian rules football in Tasmania is hurting. They're trying, they're trying to get their claws in because they know they're hurting. You know, where, where did, at the top level, how do you look at that and say, you know, we, we need to get this into schools, we need programs, we need to, we need to get this going again, state league, whatever it is it takes. Yeah, I think, I think, um, look, I, I, I suppose I've been out of football administration for five years now, so um, you still take an interest, but... Um, it's good sort of time to reflect and just listen and learn. And, you know, I, know I, I, I feel like I know sport as well as anyone in Tasmania. Um, yeah. And there's no doubt, um, you know, in the role that I'm in now, I looked after the Australian Masters games and you're dealing with a bunch of different sports. So you get a feel for sport on a, and on a state, statewide basis. And there's no doubt, um, um, you know, footy, I think Tasmanians should stop looking at what happens in Victoria and mm -hmm. they actually should study more about what happens in South Australia and Western Australia because yeah. we, we, Victoria was, you know, we take, spoke a lot about the old VFL. The VFL, you know, it was the best competition in the nation, it had, you know, 12 teams. Um, but South Australia and West Australia were really quite equivalent to Tasmania. So we were, you know, the big four footy states were yeah. obviously Victoria, West Australia and South Australia. Yeah. And, West Australia and South Australia and footy um, has grown and prospered on the back of two AFL clubs. Yeah. Right? Is that, it's actually, it's actually, you know, in their local comp, um, you know, if Subiaco were playing Swan Districts without two AFL teams playing, like, um, I know they get less crowds, you know, in the good old days, you know, there are lots of people playing uh, there, but that was slowly but surely, same as what was happening in Tasmania. Yeah. The crowds were going from the 60s and 70s and they're slowly dwindling. Yep. Um, the same was happening in Western Australia and the survival of West Australian and South Australian mm -hmm. footy has been their AFL clubs, yes. right? Um, and their AFL clubs invest back in the development of the game, right? So, um, like, Hawthorne and North Melbourne don't invest back in the development of the game. No. But, because they're not our teams, they're yeah. Hawthorne and North Melbourne, yeah. right? So, um, but that's Western Australia, the two teams in in South Australia are Adelaide's teams, like yeah. South Australia's teams and oh, West drawing, Australia's teams. Power, yeah. yeah, and the same in Queensland and New South Wales. So it's just, it's just that look, um, AFL is nowhere near the most popular game in Queensland and New South Wales, no. mm -hmm. and it, so, but it's, it, it is what it is. Like you know, they they have the grand final, the Gabba and Sydney Swans. You know, when they're winning the Sydney Swans, yeah, they'll yeah. pack out the SCG. We'll yep. um, but there's six million people living in the city, and but it's still, you know, both those towns are still rugby towns. They're not AFL towns, yeah. um, and they'll never be AFL towns. Mm. But AFL will play a role. But yeah. Tassie's an AFL town, um, and so in the end, Adelaide's the best, in my opinion. And Tim Lane, I know, is particularly passionate about this. But Adelaide is the best comparison because. Economically, economically, we're, we're not far off half of South Australia. Yep. Right? And they've got two teams and they're both surviving fine, yeah. right? Well, and yes. yeah. and we're, why can't we have one? Well, we're yeah. like a bit like yeah. a Geelong, aren't we? Geelong's a city. Yeah, Geelong's well, we're, we're, a we're, 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 we're population. I 
I'm yeah. not sure now if it brings Tony on. Yeah. I think I don't know the population of Geelong, but boy, they've they been so successful. Well, great at Geelong, but Geelong's a different oh, I, yeah, Geelong's I, I a different beast. But yeah, but, but I think I think I, I, the same. Look, I I, I remember. Tom Harley was the CEO of AFL New South Wales for a long time while I was uh, at AFL Taz, and I remember saying to Tom Harley once, "What, what would happen if if you took away Geelong from mm. in, took away Geelong's AFL team? What would it do to the community?" And he said, "Well, mate, it won't. It, it I understand your question, but it's never going to happen because the community will never let it happen. Right? Whereas, whereas what what we should have the same mentality in Tasmania. We if you if it's actually right now at this point in time. It's about care. Either either Tasmania cares about footy, or we just let it go. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. So you know, um, clubs will still survive. You know, the Lord Love Footy Club, the Hobart Footy Club, North Hobart Footy Club. They'll they'll still survive. But it's more it, the kids more more sort of. Yeah. I mean, this week to see that Kingborough can't field an under eighteen team is pretty sad. Yeah. Well, right? I, I was a Smith on the weekend. They, they, they haven't got it. Yeah, 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 no. yeah, yeah. But you're sad. You're yeah, sitting yeah. here looking at a, a yeah. nice looking football ground and yeah. no one there to, to yeah. play on it. Well, yeah. they've got they got they've still got a local comp, which is at least something. But um, mm. but but you know we want to see we want the only thing that will take the game forward will be our own AFL too. We deserve to be in the national comp. Yeah. We're in the national cricket comp. Um, the basketball now? Yeah, and so I think the basketball the one's a good example. When I talk about care, basketball, the National Basketball League is a privately owned competition. Mm. But Larry Kesselman oh. brought down um, the NBL Blitz last year mm. and he took teams all around the state and he all he wanted to see was whether Tasmanian cared about basketball. Support. Right? Yep. Um but it was more, not so much about support, is it? He wanted to get a feel as where they cared about basketball. Yeah, right? So obviously that's about support, yeah, right? Yeah. So, but, but he walked away and said, okay, this state cares about it and he did deal with the government. So, like, I, I am disappointed um, with all the time. I love working for the AFL um, and with the AFL, but I work for Tasmanian footy, not for the AFL. No. Unfortunately, the guys now work for the AFL. They don't work for Tasmanian footy, that's right? Great. So... Um, but I love the time at the AFL and I love working with the AFL. Um, but they don't care anymore. Yeah, no. They don't actually care about Tasmania. So mm. that, yeah. I'm not sure whether they ever care, but they certainly don't care that, now. That was my point. Uh, this is naive. This is just, I'm just like a general person off the street. So this is, when I've spoken to people up north or you know, in general, the perception is that, and you can correct me on this, but like when it's AFL TAS, because it's AFL TAS, the money that was coming for, for I think I've got this right, that the amount of money that was poured into South Australian football, Western Australian football, obviously very strong football states, but as we go back and we spoke about early, we were a super strong mm. and could mix it with those mm. states, probably not quite there, but we're, we're close, you know. And the amount of money that we get, is, is that part of the issue? Uh, like... You drive now, I mean, I don't know. Look, I, I, I think one of the biggest hits that we've copped is, is so many sports, like surfing. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, I don't know, whatever it is now, uh, boxing. But it, it, there's so many sports now that never used to be there. Weren't that's we? right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I know that's hurt, but you go through your local, you go for a drive now through Tasmania, and we just did it. But all your, even your... your um, uh, places out near um, Cressy or Parata and all the, you know, out the, on the East Coast and Helens, uh, no more football sides. No, no. So, that's right. But I think, you know, I think, I think that's why I agree with you. I understand, right? Um, but the, even if we have an AFL team, there's going to be in, they could give us an AFL team tomorrow and in 25 years time there'll still be less footy clubs now, now than there, there is now that's just kind of for all the reasons you said yeah, yeah, so yeah. The, the, it'll settle down look you, we could sit here with a map of Tasmania and we could pick all the towns and the northwest coast is a good example we could pick all the towns that you know should have a footy club and, and right. we should protect it right so the northwest coast is a good example because they're probably going to end up at the top level with Six footy teams, right? Well, they so, into one another, don't they? Well, yeah. well it's yeah. going to be Wynyard, it's going to be yeah. Burnie, Penguin, yeah. Olveston, one in Devonport, and Latrobe, yeah. right? So that's going to be six footy teams on the coast. Mm. Now, in Hobart, 
it's mm. it's pretty easy. It's where the people live. There should be Lauderdale. There should be Kingborough. There should be you know m- m- maybe one in one or two in the city. Yeah. Um, Gormorky, and the northern suburbs is capable of having actually two good quality footy teams right. and. And Brighton should have a footy team, Sorella should have a footy team, and sort of that—that's where the people live, yeah. right? So you, you got some sort of must protect footy team. So, that, but you know, you know, will you know will St Virgil's be here in twenty five years time? OHA be here in yeah. twenty five years time? I don't know, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so anyway, there'll be—I think there'll be less footy teams. But what the AFL, what an AFL team will do, is just do what cricket's done for Tasmania, right? So we, we're sitting here and talking okay. about cricket. Okay. The captain no, of no. Australia is a Tasmanian. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Right, well, right. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's right. We, we, we're so, lucky to have two. And, and in the end, and we're playing in a competition against the best players in the world. Like Tassie, right. you know, we're about to start Sheffield Shield and they're not going to South Africa. And you know, I don't know when Tassie plays New South Wales, no. but they're going to be playing against Dave Warner and Steve Smith and, yeah. you know... Um, Pat Cummins and Mitchell Stark and Nathan Lyon and all that. So you're playing against, and like like I said, I, I, I you know, Matthew is a Tasmanian boy who became the captain of Victoria. Like, Tasmanians yeah, can know. actually succeed, yes. right? And so, and all of these champion players that have, um, you know, if we get, you know, like the Gold Coast when we start, we need, we need a bit of a, you know, chop out for, uh, in draft picks and that sort of thing. We... So like the cricket team, we want we want good players to come in from interstate. Mm-hmm. Right? That's what happens with our yeah. cricket team. Good yeah. players coming in from interstate. Um, but also we want to keep our best kids, right? Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. we want to draft our best kids. And so, you know, when you look at, um, you know, the Jack Rowe wouldn't have gone to play at Richmond if we had our own team. Oh, for sure. Mania, he right? So no. he would have got drafted by the Tasmanian team, right? And so, <laughs> yeah. you know, so in Grant Birchall and... Jeremy Howe you know, and all that, these people. That, that, that's my yeah. argument yeah. because we have had such good wow. football. Yes. Yes, so if we can go back to Peter Hudson, we, we still have. We can say young Re- Well, of course we have. Yeah, yeah. But the thing is, that's the problem. They're taking the, the best of what we've got. I know, yeah. I know they used to say, oh, well, we in the draft, we used to sit about the Devils, we had four or five kids. Yeah. Now we're getting probably one. But yeah. we are talking the best. Yeah, so Australia. I think if Tasmania in so, the Tassie Devils team, in the Devil, Tassie Devils era, for example, if Tasmania had their own AFL team and also had a team in the VFL, then you would have found, you know, the guys like uh, Ben Ack and, and Ian Callanan and, you know, Brett Gape and, and Cameron Thurley, um, you know, and there's you know many more that I've missed, but those guys actually would have been playing for Tasmania's AFL team, right? So, and they might have been, like I was at Hawthorne, they might not be a regular first game, but they get a game every now and then, they're on the list. So in the end, that's what... um, And then people don't understand, unless you've got it, we've never had it, right? Um, I talk about, um, you know, a good example, just using quick examples of cricket, like Dan Marsh was not a Tasmanian, but no. he still lives here. He lives here yeah. Damien Wright is not on a Tasmanian, no. but he still lives here, yeah. right? Um, and, uh, you know, Matthew Wade is a Tasmanian. But he didn't live here, right. and he, but he came back. Yeah. And Tim Payne's captain of Australia, and he lives here. David Boone still lives in Tasmania, yeah. right? Um, Ricky Ponning doesn't, but he's still Tasmanian, yeah. right? So um, the only 200-game AFL player that... In the modern era, since the national draft, the only 200 game AFL player that lives in Tasmania is Matthew Armstrong. Yeah, mm. okay. he's the only one. They all and the rest of them haven't come back. Yeah. So having our own team means that the kids might still go because they might get drafted by someone else. Yeah. But they'll probably come back at the back end of their career yeah. and have a have a scratch around. So that's where, you know, um, particularly you know, because they they will determine where they ultimately want to live, um, but. But yeah, we don't we we just can't the player drain. Yeah. Do, um, do the AFL yeah. give us enough money? It's not about money. It's not about money. No. That, that's that that was no. See a lot of people don't mm-hmm. understand that. It's just about a team. Yeah. Right? So I remember the, the guy who's the CEO of um, GWS is a guy called David Matthews and and he used to be my boss basically at the AFL. So he's the guy at the AFL that I used to report to. Twenty years ago he asked me what's the best thing the AFL could do for Tasmania? And I said, give us our own AFL team and nothing's changed. Right? Yeah. So, so in, in the end, the, the, it's the best thing that will happen. 
Oh, will Tasmanian football ever not be part of this state? No, it'll always be part of this state. But again, I keep coming back to, you know, we're talking about a lot of the great things that happened in the good old days. Um, um, and Tasmanians don't care as much as they used to. Um, but the government can fix that. Like, I think Peter Gutman's doing a good job and hopefully he stands firm and, and the government can fix it. And the only way he can fix it is we've got to somehow get our... Well, he, he's, <laughs> he's, he's pushing it, which is yeah. good. Well, well he, he is. is. I mean, and in Tasmania, when I say it's not about money, right? No, that's what I don't understand. What, what, so when I say it's yeah. not about money, Tasmania can afford an AFL team, but they're no different than Gold Coast and GWS. Yeah. But... But the difference in Tasmania is that it'll probably see... It should be probably a government a, a government business enterprise. It probably should be... It should be a, a effectively underwritten by the government. No different than Aurora is or a Spirit of Tasmania yeah. is or mm. Taswater is or whatever, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is our own AFL team um, should be we'll underwritten. Right. Now, it, it, it actually should be underwritten by the AFL, but you'll find we won't get it if it has to be underwritten by the AFL. So... If it doesn't cost the AFL any money, we're a good chance. Yeah. So that's where, in the short term, the government has to step up. Mm -hmm. um, but and it won't be a massive cost because um, if we were winning, if we were winning, we have got enough money oh. to have our own AFL team. Yeah. No, yeah. Because the other thing that people miss is a what in the AFL system is what called an equalisation fund. So basically, the clubs get a. a about enough money from AFL dividends, this is pre-COVID, um, AFL dividends to fund their football department, right? So, um, and they've got a salary cap in their football department. So Richmond, just because they're the premiership team, can't spend any more money than the Gold Coast. They can only spend the same amount of money, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. So, um, and all, and that, the bulk of that money comes from the, from dividends yep. from the AFL. From the AFL. Right? Yep. Um, the, the rest of the operations of the club, which are the sort of marketing and admin and sponsorship, and then the, just the general administration of the club, the club has to fund that. But in the end, we can look at a uniquely Tasmanian model. And so if it costs, for example, just if it costs the Richmond Footy Club, you know, $80 million, $90 million to run it, um, it might only cost Tasmania $50 million 50 to run it. Right? Yeah, okay. So our cost base will be significantly... Less, less. Yep. If, if if the government get involved, because yep. you know tourism Tasmania can play a big role, which would, which means that you know effectively they could be the marketing department, um, and it saves it saves the money because the AFL footy is about getting people coming into the state. So, yeah, get more boats, yeah. and as I said, perhaps as we spoke about jumping on the show, hopefully when uh, COVID. We start to move out of that. I mean, I, I was away. We just full of people up there from Victoria, Western Australia. We're still getting tourists coming in. Yeah. Because we're uh, travelling okay. Yeah. Some of our other friends in the other states aren't. Yeah. But well, I feel footy is a, AFL footy is a really... Because because of the power of the AFL national competition, yeah. AFL footy in the winter, there isn't a better strategy. No. Right? Yeah. But, but our own team, you know, can you imagine... Can you imagine... Collingwood playing in Tasmania, no. mm -hmm. right? So fantastic. and Richmond playing in Tasmania, right? So you get all those people coming in. So I think from a, but it needs to be effectively owned and operated by that. Yeah. By that, well, it needs to be owned and operated by Tasmanians. So not the AFL. Yeah, no, can't, that's, that's can't be run by the AFL. That's where I was going with it. Yeah, it can't be. It, to, the, you know what the model that they've got at GWS and Gold Coast won't work in Tasmania, no, and, and that, actually okay. because one the AFL won't spend the money in Tasmania, yeah, right, and two yeah. they don't need to, no, because we'll generate more money than they will. Than what they will. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I look, I think, I think, um, I think that the Gold Coast could win, you know, three premierships in a row, and they still won't make any money. No. And and I think GWS could win ten premierships in a row, and, and they, they still won't make any money. Because They'll still be prop. Yeah, and look, the Sydney Swan again. Sydney Swans have been uh, the Sydney Swans operate in profit, but not much. Yep. They are they, you know, if they they just make four or five hundred thousand bucks a year, which is better than losing money. But mm. if they don't win, they won't make any Sydney, money, yeah. and then they'll be propped up by the AFL. Yeah. Right. So mm. Sydney Swans have been winning for a long time. Yep. Right. Um, and Brisbane the same. Brisbane weren't winning; they're losing money now. They're winning; they're making money. Right. Yeah. 
So um, it's all about winning or losing, but Tasmania would be no different. Yeah. No. Yeah, it's interesting. Mm. I mean, I, you, you learn, that's, what I mean, that's why I wanted to talk to you, because, I don't know, I, it just goes on and on and on, and people keep talking about it, but you've got to understand the nuts and bolts of it. Yeah, Tasmania, and, 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 and Tasmania unless, can make it work. Yeah, no unless we're talking to someone like yeah. yourself. Exactly. Yeah. I, I just don't think the general people actually get this. So I, you put me straight with a few things, but just talking to people, you know. Yeah. Why don't the AFL give us more money? Why? I'm talking about for clubs and for, you know, football in general, but... Well, they can't. They, they, can't. they, they, they won't make yeah. any difference. They won't make right? no. So, so in is, the end, a... yeah, so the difference is that the stimulator of the growth of the game will be a national team. It will be a national team. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Well, that's what we need yeah. to do. Yeah, right? and so yeah. the difference with yeah. basketball, um, basketball is a different beast. You can't compare basketball with footy. Um, no. It's a different game. Um it's a game where historically in Australia, you know, they don't get, they haven't got stadiums with 100,000 people. No, right? they're, not so, built, they're not built so, for that. No, so in the end, it's a different, it, it, it's a different organisation and, and cricket also is a different organisation. So, you know, people don't even go and watch cricket unless no. it's T20, yeah. right? They don't go and watch Sheffield Shield on one day stuff, right? So, yes. And that's, but that's the reality. They don't, they don't go and watch them in New South Wales either, yeah. right? So, like, you know, um, but if the, the Big Bash has been a success, then people go and watch it. But other than the Big Bash, you know, they go like and watch it? Australia play. Do you like it? <laughs> the Big Bash? Yeah. Yeah. yeah you, you, you like the 2020s? I think, I, think it's, um, I think it's really interesting if you're a sport fanatic, and I guess I am, is that the most modern version of the game is the most popular. Um, mm. And, yeah, I think it's... But I think it's been good for cricket. Have you seen the Ultimate Cricket Challenge? K-R-I-C-K-E-T. I was watching it today. On Fox Tunnel? Oh, I haven't seen it. I couldn't. I don't know. It's actually like on the car, but... It's indoor cricket. It's indoor cricket. Oh, right, no, I didn't see it. They're hitting six. It's just like... Yeah. Really do it. And they've got targets here. I think... I think they had all these good players come out. I think... I think... I think... But I think what cricket's done really well is that they've got this and but I don't think any other sport can do it I know you know basketball's tried it with three on threes but yeah, I think some sports annoying. shouldn't be tampered with yeah. I think no. basketball's one that you can't really no. tamper with and I think um, um, because basketball's all played in the last 30 seconds of the game anyway um, and then but AFL's one of those games I don't think you can have a different version of it you've yeah. just got to play that. you just got to play right? them, yeah. whereas cricket's found a way I mean the uh, the um, you know the one day game will still stand the test of time, and the T Twenty will stand yeah. the test of time. And you know they got 100, 100 ball games happening yeah. now. Um, you know T Tens, right? But yeah. but I think in the end, I think T Twenty is here to stay. Yeah. Um, but I think the players have been remarkable because you know the Test players have adapted. I think it's made Test cricket better. Yeah. Um, but Test cricket still what the kids want to play, which is great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Scott, Scott yeah. Wade, I yeah. tell you what, we're I can sit here. We're going to have to podcast all this. <laughs> I can sit here and talk to you all bloody night, mate. Because podcast, it's, it's been fantastic. Absolutely been fantastic. Podcast. And uh, I wish we could have uh, had this going live, guys. But uh, as I said, technology didn't allow us to do that. But, uh, mate, it's been an absolute honour. No, talk thank to you. you. Absolute honour. No, it has been terrific. And we, we wish Maddie, yeah. of course, all the best in that. And, yeah, well, all I, the, all he the, used uh, to be my son. You know. He used to be. Now I missed his father. He's a, he's a funny story. It was good tonight because it just, we just realised that there, he has got a father. Glenny <laughs> <laughs> Scott, about, uh, probably about eight months ago, maybe 12 months ago, the way things are going, that I was in Bunnings up here and, and I saw your son, Matthew, yeah. and uh, he was buying some stuff and... I, uh, I hate doing this to people, but I, I did go up to him and say, yeah. mate, look, I'm from the Friday Frothy. We do this show. Would you be interested? And I gave him a card. Did you say bugger off? He hit, he hit me hard. <laughs> no, no. No. He didn't. I'm kidding. But, oh, yeah, well, it, but I did yeah. run into him and, and actually ask him, so it was quite quite funny. No, you get it. Uh, That's what you do, mate. You, yeah. you, you don't die trying. No, no. no. <laughs> But, uh, but mate, look, well, absolutely. I'll tell him I came on in. Well, I yeah, I'll yeah. tell him I committed him. Absolutely fantastic to have you. No, no, right. Really enjoyed the story. Legend, legend of the game. Mate. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, we should be proud. All Tasmanians and uh, should be proud. And, you know, as you say, we we you're out of the game, you're out of it for a while, and and we do forget. Yeah. Uh, unless you're as 
Starting to get as old as uh, some of us. <laughs> <laughs> These two nuts across the bar. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> it's all mate. Okay, thanks, Jeff. Thank you, right. thank you, Scott. Scotty. Fantastic for you coming in. Thank you, guys. Hope you've enjoyed the interview. Uh, I won't reveal who our next interview is, but um, could be good. Uh, anyway, <laughs> enjoy. <laughs> could, be, could be good. Could be good. <laughs> <laughs> you're listening to the Friday Frothy. What a fantastic show.